皆さんこんにちはアーサーです今回は外国人とのインタビューをお届けしたいと思います前回のアンディとの会話が本当に漏れがっててとても楽しかったですで皆さんの反響も本当にすごくてとても嬉しかったですお役に立ててとても嬉しいですあの今回の外国人とのインタビューはジョッシュとの会話になりますジョッシュはまあ数ヶ月前からの知り合いでジョッシュは最初の頃は数年前に海軍として訪日されたそうですで今は英語講師として活動していて、まあ、本当に日本をめぐってあの英語講師をやっています。He's been to Nagano, he's been to other places、まあ、主にあの田舎の学校で教えられているんですが、あの東京のミートアップで知り合って、まあ、気があって、We had a really great time together。いつも通りに外国人とのインタビューはほぼ 100% 英語なんですが、日本語の字幕、英語の字幕が両方あるので、聞き取れないことがあれば、いつでも確認できます。あなたのリスニングのためになると思います。で、あと、あの、今回はいろんなことをお話しすると思うんですが、これから僕に外国人と話してほしいこと、聞いてほしいことがあれば、ぜひコメント欄で教えてください。And with that, let's get started.Is there something you want to ask me about?、Uh, no, I'll just see where it goes. So. Okay, okay. Let's hope it doesn't go down the poop chute. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, so, Josh, thanks so much for meeting with me today. I appreciate it.、Uh, you're welcome, man. It's a pleasure to, to talk to you. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So, today, I guess,、um, for, by the way, we'll have subtitles on here. So, we don't need to like speak of Japanese or anything like that. But,、okay. um, so, first of all, where are you from and what's your connection with Japan? Uh, so, I'm from, from America,、uh, grew up in California、uh, near San Francisco. And so, my connection to Japan originally, I came here from the US Navy.、Mm. So, I was、uh, stationed in Yokosuka for four years. And then, when I got out of the Navy, I went back to the US. And、mm. yeah, let's see, what, 17, no. You know, About 14 years later, I came back. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. yeah. Right. What, what, what made you come here for the second time?、Uh, so, when I was here in the Navy,、uh, I had gotten married、uh, when we went to the US.、Uh, I'd later gotten divorced. And so, my ex wife and my son currently live here. And so,、mm-hmm. um, I just needed a change from what I was doing in the US. So, I decided、mm-hmm. to. Come to Japan, see if、mm-hmm. what it'd be like、uh, living here, not、mm-hmm. being in the military. So,、yeah. having a different experience、uh, this time、right. around. Yeah, yeah so that, that's really interesting. I think because you came here as part of the military, you have a different viewpoint on living in Japan, like I do. But for you,、um, what's the difference between living here as part of the military versus living here as just living here? Uh, well, so like a US base is sort of、mm-hmm. an American town or city that just happens to be located in Japan. So、uh-huh. everybody speaks English.、Uh, we have, I can go to the store and buy American products, the same products I would get in the US that I can't necessarily get in a store in, in Japan.、Mm-hmm. And so It's kind of, I would only have to really visit Japan if I left the base.、Mm. So it's, it's kind of,、uh, you're not really dealing with like the full aspect of living in、mm. Japan, where I see. You know, when you go to the store, you're just buying Japanese products, or、mm-hmm. if you need any, anything done, you have to communicate with the local government. Whereas、mm. in the military, I would just communicate with other Americans and deal with.、Uh, mm. With that, and and your status here is different too, to where now I live here with a visa, a work visa, where before I was just I was on a a different type of immigration、mm-hmm. thing.、Um, mm-hmm. It was handled by the US, so I never had to deal with immigration or anything like that. I had special, a special immigration status.、Mm-hmm. So, so I know when I lived in Germany. Right. So I was born in Germany. We would go to the American base in Germany and it was a very similar situation. But so, so in Japan, too, like you're, if you're an American citizen, you can go to the, to the, can you go to the base freely or is there like specific clearance you need?
to go? Uh, no, you can't go freely. You would have to mm -hmm. go with somebody who would escort you, somebody who has ah. access to the base. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know in in Germany, it was a little bit different. I remember going with my parents to like go to a restaurant that was on the base. And so maybe it wasn't like the, the central part of the base, just like like the outer part, but I don't know. I don't know what it was like. I was really young back then. But yeah. well, so so what's like, so... So that's interesting. So now, what are you doing for work in Japan? Uh, so I came here um, just looking for the easiest visa to get to come over here. Mm -hmm. So I came here as an English teacher. And then once I got here, I'd see what the job landscape was and okay. uh, kind of figure some things out and then mm -hmm. figure out what I want to do from there. Right. So currently, I, I teach English, but working on other things on the side to eventually get right. out of English teaching. Yeah, you're doing like photography or something, right? Uh, yeah, that would be the goal. Actually, on the side thing is to start building up a photography business and maybe eventually mm -hmm. do like tours, workshops, uh, mm -hmm. that type of stuff yeah. when tourism comes back. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, please, um, please share with me like your Instagram or some information. We can put it in the description of this video. I'm more than okay. happy to do that. But so where where do you teach school? Do you teach at like an Eikaiwa school or do you teach in a regular school? So I've only taught in public schools. So okay. I've been in uh, elementary and junior high. I haven't done high school. And I've mm -hmm. also taught at, a, what is it, like a preschool. So Oikwen, mm -hmm. I don't know if that translates into like yeah. preschool in Japanese, but yeah. Mm -hmm. so, wow. So what is it like working at a school? in Japan? Uh, it's, it's interesting because this like right now I teach at a junior high. So the, the structure mm -hmm. of the school is differently than in the U.S. where uh, mm -hmm. where I think in Japan, as you go from elementary school to junior high to high school, the the way classes are conducted don't really change very much. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in the U.S., when you go from elementary school into junior high, from junior high mm -hmm. up, that's essentially uh, how all the schools are run. And so basically, mm -hmm. so here in Japan, teaching in the public school, uh, the students stay in one class and mm -hmm. then they have different teachers come to their class to teach at different subjects to where, like when I was in junior high in the US, uh, I had a same schedule every day. So the same class every single uh, period mm -hmm. all week long. And then I would go to the class, the teacher would stay in the class and then we would, we would go to the teacher's class to, to do a subject. So that part is, yeah. different yeah and yeah uh, one of the other things is the students eat lunch in their classroom here to where they don't have yeah. cafeterias mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know so i just started working at tokyo joshigaku and in binatoku back in october and yeah i was kind of shocked about the same thing too it's like in the states the classrooms are like the teacher's space and you have like the teacher's desk is in the corner and stuff but in japan it's like this, the classroom is the student space and the teachers just kind of visit, you know? Yeah. 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 Wow. So, it's, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. What, what are some other differences you've noticed between maybe U S schools and Japanese schools? Um, so that was the biggest thing. I think the two biggest things as in like your daily routine is that like mm -hmm. you go to the classroom, the students go, don't come to yours mm -hmm. and for lunch, the students, they don't eat lunch in a cafeteria they eat lunch with their class mm -hmm. so there's not like a big mingling of the yeah. whole student body in one space at mm -hmm. a, a certain time of the day yeah uh, it's very group oriented so mm -hmm. uh i guess the other thing too is when i was in junior high or elementary school like when school finished at the end of the school day which is typically about 3 30 3 o'clock or 3 30 everybody went home Mm -hmm. You know, here they have uh, students stay after school uh, mm -hmm. to do club activities. Mm -hmm. So being in a just in junior high, being a member of some type of club, whether it's band, uh, music club, or a, particularly a sports club, mm -hmm. is a huge deal. And so they will, students sometimes don't leave school till after five o'clock at night or, yeah. or later uh, to do their club activities. So that, that's a, a different thing to where uh, it was, you go to school and then you leave and go home here. School is more like their, uh, it is the center of their life. 
it, it right. basically was your life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I remember, you know, going through uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school, and in in the states, and in high school, you know, you had clubs, and they were they were really casual. But in Japan, the bukatsu, the club system is really, really serious. Like in the States, if you're on a sports team, then you stay a while. But in Japan, it's like no matter what your club is, you, you stay for a while. Yeah, yeah. Every club stays for a long time, no yeah. matter what it is. And then in the U.S., we only had certain – yeah, the only clubs we really had really were sports clubs. You might have different clubs, but yeah, they were very, very casual. Yeah. And uh, – and then for the sports teams, you had to try out to make the team. Yeah. To where here, it seems like if you want to join the sports team, you 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 join it. Uh, it's yeah. not it's not as competitive, I guess. It's not they're not uh, the sports teams yeah. are not done with competition per se. Yeah, uh, more just uh, so yeah. The so the schools function as uh, mm -hmm. basically like a daycare, you could say, yeah. like yeah, in, in a big way, yeah. Yeah, it holds the students for like the whole day until the parents come home, pretty much. By the way, did you did you do any sports in school, in high school or middle school? Did I? Uh, yeah. No, I didn't know. No, I just. I uh, <laughs> yeah, in high school, I went to a new high school, and so my parents were like, you should do sports, Arthur. So I I tried out for the wrestling team, and I quit after day one because it was too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. So. Okay, so now in um, by the way, can can I ask where where you live in Japan right now? Uh, so now I live in Yamanashi Prefecture mm -hmm. near Mount Fuji. Okay. So, and I've lived. Uh, so when I first got here, I sort of lived in a different prefecture every year mm -hmm. for the first three years. Okay. So it started out in Ibaraki, mm -hmm. then I went to uh, Nagano. So I've only mm -hmm. lived in the, what they would say the Inaka, the countryside, mm -hmm. so, and different what? variations of it. What What was the reason for moving so much? Uh, just when I got here, I worked for I guess what would they they tie, it was a really bad company, and I think they okay. they called companies here right. They were uh, so it was a really a horrible company. So I switched uh, okay. employer, and okay. they didn't the employer I switched to they didn't have any positions open mm -hmm. where I was at. In, in the local area okay. so they because i did it during summer so every year some teachers quit during summer so i just was waiting for a spot to open up okay. and nothing opened up around where i was at and mm -hmm. so they put my name into the headquarters central headquarters and then they searched throughout uh the the country and then they found a spot in uh out in nagano which was uh okay really small, small town. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, well, yeah. And then now in Yamanashi, just because of like, like a contract situation between the, the okay. town and the company. So I had to move to sure. Yamanashi. Yeah. Well, that, that's cool. I mean, it's good. You're able to experience lots of, lots of Japan because, you know, a lot of people, when they think of Japan, they think of Tokyo or Osaka or Kyoto, but like most of Japan's not like that, you know. No, I think the the best saying I've heard was like, uh, "Tokyo is in Japan, but Japan is not Tokyo." Yeah, right. Because right. once you leave Tokyo, everything is different. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is a lot slower, not as convenient. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, everything. Tokyo is the like the hub of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Once you get out into the the more rural areas, it's a lot mm. different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you like about living in the Inaka in Japan? Um, I guess I get to drive, so okay. I have more freedom. I'm not reliant on a train system. Mm -hmm. Um, to where because I've lived in like in Yokosuka when I was in the Navy, I lived in Yokosuka, so I didn't drive, so I was reliant on the train. Yeah. And then even uh, when I vacationed here, so I lived in Kyoto for like a month and same with Yokohama oh, cool. and shared houses uh, when I was just doing a long vacation stay. And, but I was reliant on the train. And when I would travel around, when you're just relying on the bus and train system, sometimes if you want to go to more distant places, it's very mm -hmm. hard. So having yeah. a car, I get more freedom to just explore my 
when I feel like it and I can go to places that is that are difficult to get to by car or not by mm-hmm. car, but easy to get to by car, but more difficult to get to by train or yeah. bus. So that's what yeah, I like yeah. is I just have more freedom, I feel like, uh, being in the countryside. And it's yeah, quiet. I- yeah, I so in the place where I live right now, uh, in in uh, Kawasaki, there there's um, a parking space included in my rent, but I don't use it. But yeah, parking is so expensive in Japan. You know, I I'm thinking about getting a car soon, but for my everyday life, you know, trains are just really convenient. Yeah, I think if if you live in Tokyo and you don't travel around the country very mm-hmm. much. Then this, the train and bus system is fine. But I like to go out and yeah. explore. Too. I know. I'm. Yeah. I'm just. I'm too lazy. I, I like staying at home recently. I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm so tired of working all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But cool, man. So, so now that you've been living here, and how long have you been living here the second time around now? It's been three and a half years. Okay. So you've been here for about three and a half years. It's a good amount of time. What's something? you really like about Japan? Well, actually, before that, do, do you think you're going to be going back to the States anytime soon? Uh, well, not to move, I think, unless mm-hmm. like, I can't get out of teaching. So I give myself another year and a half, two year okay. reign. Uh, if I can't get out of teaching, then I'll probably go back mm-hmm. to the States. But uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go back to visit, but with the current mm-hmm. travel situation, that's not possible. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So what um so what is it that you like about living in Japan? Like why why did you choose to say okay I want to live here? Um, I think like when I would travel here, um, uh, I did so I was traveling around Asia for a while. Mm-hmm. I just took a, like a year off. Well, the plan was like a year off from work. It turned out to be mm-hmm. a little bit longer, but um, so I did I. I so as a tourist, you can get a three, you get a three month tourist visa while you're here. So I took the three months to travel around Japan. So I learned that it was actually, you live in a shared house that mm-hmm. is actually pretty cheap mm-hmm. um, to stay in one location for a long time. So I stayed in Kyoto for a month and Yokohama for a month. And then I spent mm-hmm. another month just traveling around. But I use those places as like a, as a base, especially Kyoto mm-hmm. to uh, explore the Kansai area. And as I got out more further away from the tourist places, mm-hmm. um, from Kyoto, and and I got out more in the countryside, and a little further out into Kyushu and stuff, I just it was it was more interesting to see the different landscapes and and yeah. experience different aspects of the culture. Mm-hmm. So that was really like fascinating to me, and um, also I think like culture wise like the culture here reminds me a lot of the military it's kind of very hierarchical okay. um and has sort of the same dynamic as, as the culture mm-hmm. of the military. so that way it's more comfortable and i guess like safety aspect it's very mm-hmm. peaceful and calm here mm-hmm. where uh the u.s currently is a little bit chaotic <laughs> a little bit a little bit yeah man i've been looking at the news and uh I just, we can talk about that on another episode, man. Um, but well, yeah, that's really, really great to know. So what, so one thing though, that I'd like to, I'm really interested in knowing about is what is something that is different from what you expected? So like when you moved to Japan, you thought your life was going to be like this, but actually it's like this. Oh, Does anything come to mind? Um... Yeah, I guess like uh, most of my experience had been living in like a city. I've only lived in like cities. Mm-hmm. So I didn't expect to come here and to live out in the rural area, like in farmland, especially yeah. when I lived out in Nagano, it was, uh, I lived in a town of 7,000 people and the main industry of the town was, uh, you could say rice. Uh, okay. Yeah. Rice. Uh, well, it was farming, farming, so they grew mainly rice and apples. Okay. And so, uh, very Nagano. Yeah. So everybody knew me, but I didn't know anybody. So I, I think that was the biggest thing was like knowing that 
you stand out. Like there was no yeah. way I could blend in. In Tokyo, I can blend in. In Yokohama, Osaka, yeah. Kyoto, I can just blend in. Even here, since I live by Fuji, it's a tourist area. If I go out and I go around Fuji, uh, most people just think I'm a tourist. So I can sort of blend yeah. in. But like out there, when you're in the countryside, like mm -hmm. deep in, like you, you stand out. There is no avoiding like uh, yeah. standing out. So you can't blend in. So you have to really watch what you do. Yeah. Because, yeah, it, it, people do judge you, right, by your yeah. actions. So, right. So that was the biggest thing was like, I guess, going from like in the U, especially being a part of the majority mm -hmm. to coming here and being part of a very small minority and yeah. just having those roles changed was one of the biggest things. So now I can understand a little bit better how minority communities mm -hmm. and the problems they face sort of in the U.S. were. I didn't experience yeah. it in the U.S., but I experienced it here. So it makes me, I have a different perspective of, I guess, things in the U.S. now and a better understanding yeah. of different communities in the U.S. So, yeah, so See, I think being part of a minority is being, that's yeah. one of the biggest, like, things that, like, kind of yeah. comes up. Yeah. Okay. You told me before when we talked last time that, like, you, you were in the newspaper, the local newspaper, <laughs> like, the foreigner who comes to the, to the city or something. Oh yeah, so the town when I first got there, they uh they put out a little, oh, this is the new uh English teacher in the school. So yeah, so they took my picture and then it goes out to the local community newspaper. Okay. So yeah, so everybody who gets that paper, which I assume is everybody in the town, they know who I am. They know my name. So yeah. sometimes I'd be in the store and they'd just be like, hey Josh, and I'm like, uh, who who are you? <laughs> you know, so yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. man, that's, that's wonderful. Like you you know, you feel a lot of pressure when your face is in the paper and then you're doing grocery shopping and someone says, hi, <laughs> yeah. you. you know, yeah. 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 I mean, I feel the same way too. Like I'm not, I'm not super famous and I'm not that famous, but I mean, I do a, a decent amount of people know me and there are, there are lots of cases when like I'm out and then someone's like, oh, by the way, are you, are you Arthur? I'm like, what? How do you know this? Like, I, I was having like a bad conversation with someone. I'm like, oh crap, did they hear me say that? Like, like one time, just actually in the, in the town I live in, the Kawasaki, there's a new restaurant or whatever. And, um, and so I was there with my wife and my son and we were talking. And then as we were paying, the cashier was like, hey, by the way, do you do YouTube? I've seen you before. I'm like, oh man, if I got into a fight with my wife or something, you know, that's like definitely, I feel a lot of pressure from that. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. So, okay. So then what, so you talked about how if you can't get out of the English teaching gig, if you can't get out of the English teaching world, you might go back to the States in a year or two or something like that. Yeah. So what, what do you want to do? What's your dream life? in Japan that would keep you staying here? Uh, one is to, I guess my dream thing is to, uh, so uh, teaching English has been good. It's not a bad mm -hmm. job. It's taught me that I actually like to teach people. Mm -hmm. um, I guess in the last couple of years, I've gotten the chance to like do more, not more teaching out of the text, away from the textbook and not having to mm -hmm. teach from the textbook. So I've learned that like inspiring people and uh, motivating them is something that I like. So. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, really like do photo workshops and mm -hmm. photo tours to get yeah. people, out, especially to get people out into areas of Japan that they may not know about or that are off of the typical tourist mm -hmm. route. Because most people do, at least for Americans, they do this, this uh, typical route through Japan, yeah. Tokyo, mm -hmm. maybe Fuji, and then Kyoto. Mm -hmm. and they don't really venture out too much beyond yeah. those areas, right? Um, what, what's a photo tour, by the way? So a photo tour is you would take people to different locations to mm -hmm. photograph different stuff. And it may be a cultural tour where you photograph cultural events mm -hmm. or uh, one for landscapes or, yeah. And the one nice thing is you have the, the, definitely have four seasons here. So mm -hmm. um, you could do one based around, say, fall leaves or uh, cherry blossoms or, Mm -hmm. um, in summer you have oh, okay. or uh, in winter you have the, mm -hmm. the winter uh, snow areas so um, that would be good I, I met a guy here who's done that for 20 years so wow trying to learn from him 
how everything works. And so yeah. uh, we haven't really been able to work together much because of the, because of Corona. But um, mm -hmm. so when that settles down, then I'll be working with him more and learning. So, yeah. um, so that, that's good. And mm -hmm. so that's, that would be kind of my dream job. I think I would like to do that no matter where, just to, to kind of lead mm -hmm. photo workshops or tours around. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's cool, dude. I am. Um... Yeah, I'm sure people would love to see your work or see your photography. And then if your business kicks off, I'm sure they would love to be a part of that because, you know, lots of people in my audience, they want to get connected with foreigners living in Japan or tourists, you know, and so who knows, maybe you can get some assistance to come help you with your tours. You know, I can, maybe. maybe I can help you with that. But so just a couple more questions. This has been great. Um, yeah. Just a couple more questions. So first, um, what, um, so you, you're teaching, you've been teaching at school for a while. You kind of know how the English educate, how the education system is in Japan and yeah. we don't need to get too negative, but what's something that you wish would change in the Japanese education system to make it better? So I, the thing I, I noticed is, um, that it's very, the education system is it's really based on like rote memorization mm -hmm. right and i think that's the why students have a hard time learning english just after they learn it if they learn it just from the public schools because uh, mm -hmm. it's just a lot of like repeating um, mm -hmm. sentences and stuff and what i think is the biggest thing is students are taught what to think but not really how to think so I think the critical thinking component of the education system is not there, mm. right? There's not a lot of mm. like, a, ask why, right? Mm. So, um, so I think that's the, the biggest thing mm. is to get away from like memorizing and doing a little bit more critical mm. thinking type stuff. I don't know exactly how the other subjects are taught, but I assume mm. the way they teach subjects doesn't vary too much from subject to subject, that is sort of mm. the same structure. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's like the English, then yeah, it's pretty much just a lot of like mm -hmm. memorizing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's not the best way to learn. Cause I know that's mm -hmm. sort of how I think foreign languages are taught in the U S when I was in college, mm -hmm. the teaching Japanese uh, learning Japanese was the same way. Mm -hmm. It was just like, re remember like vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And then you'll kind of go over the grammar of a sentence, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's not, so I think the critical thinking, so that's what I do. Like when I try to teach with the class where I don't have to teach out of the textbook mm -hmm. and I can kind of do my own thing, try to introduce it more into like more mm -hmm. how to think about like life, a little bit more like life mm -hmm. lessons and how to yeah. view life in a little bit more critical way and think about like, okay, why do you want to do this? Or, um, you know, mm -hmm. challenge yourself. failure is not bad if you learn mm -hmm. from failures. So it's just those mm -hmm. sort of life components I think are a little bit missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I see that too in, in the States too. Like, actually, I want to, I want to ask my audience something right now. So, Mina san, just to okay, I say this, kiddo. Hey, Ima Josh san go shatta. Um, was ya pretty so Nihon no, tokuni ego kyoiku, demo, demo, ipan teki no gimu kyoiku wa, a no, maruan, maruan ki o juicy state, ma, so no, nani o, nani o, oboere bai, nani o, a no, kangai re bai wa, also are in this kiddo, do, はい、考えれば、考えれば、その実際の考え方は教われないので、um, I'm really interested in hearing the, the, the ideas that you guys have about this too, because, you know, English education is a big passionate part of my life, but it was Josh, that's, um, that was a great topic. And I just want to ask people about that. And then finally, finally, so a lot of people are, um, a lot of people, um, you know, they want to connect with international people. I, I know a lot of people, a lot of my viewers would love to connect with you or someone like you, but they have some difficulty, you know, connecting, you know? So what's a piece of advice you have for people to be able to, 
you know, connect with and make friends with, with people like you or me? Um, I think it's just, don't be afraid to say hi. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, like that's, that's really what it is. If you don't say hi to somebody, somebody may not respond back and may only say hi back and it may not go anywhere, but if you don't take that initial step and in saying hello mm -hmm. and initiating a conversation, then you'll never know where, mm -hmm. where things, what can happen. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing I learned with uh, just traveling to different mm -hmm. countries that like just saying hello is like really important because mm -hmm. um, you can meet a lot yeah. of interesting people just from that. Yeah. Right? So it's like, just but, don't be afraid. I mean, not everybody's going to be friendly yeah. back, but still just don't be afraid of like rejection. Right? So. Yeah, man. But, but what if you, what if you say hi or you say something and then you do get rejected or someone looks at you like, huh, what do you want? Like, what, what do you do then? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to remember, not everybody is going to like you. It's like that in life in yeah. general, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's really just sort of, um, if you can get past that fear of rejection, which I think everybody has, mm -hmm. um, if you get past that, then it gets easier because you'll know, and you, if you go into it knowing that, you know, maybe only three out of 10 people are going mm -hmm. to say uh, hello back or be nice back. Mm -hmm. The seven people are going to reject you, but those three, you know, it's, something really great might happen from that, or mm -hmm. that's how you can connect. It's kind of like uh, if you go to a meetup, right? Mm -hmm. A meetup even, and you can introduce yourself to 50 different people that night, but you may only have a good conversation with yeah. three or four people, right? Or even just yeah. one, you never know. Yeah. So you, it's just, it's kind of a numbers game. You just have to go and, and talk to as many people as you can. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of like, that's how we met. We met at a meetup. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a good place as long as you have the courage to actually reach out and try to connect with someone it really but, it comes down to it's the more you do it the more comfortable you become yeah. and the less like intimidating it, it be it is and then after a while you'll just get to the point where if somebody doesn't respond back it's just oh well it doesn't matter right yeah. so it's just it's just uh you just repetition is, is yeah. the key to yeah i totally get that Okay, well, Josh, this has been a wonderful time. Thanks so much for uh, spending this time with me. And we'll have like information about your photography stuff or whatever you want to put down in the description box of this video. And uh, any last message you want to share with everyone or you fine? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. Just uh, go out and <laughs> uh, just have fun with life. Live life, be fun. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks so much. Talk to you next time. いかがでしたか参考になれたらとっても嬉しいです。今後も外国人とのインタビュー動画を引き続き作っていきたいと思うので、特に話してほしい外国人に聞いてほしいことがあれば、ぜひコメント欄で教えてください。And with that, we're done for today. I hope it was helpful for you. As always, enjoy your English adventures. 一緒に世界とつながりましょう !See you next time!